Buenas and Avade, and welcome to another episode of Welcome Home. My name is Kyle Mandipat. I am your host for this series, and in this episode, we're going to share with you some great beach hacks to make your life and your trip to the beach this summer a little more bearable. The Guam Homeland Security Office of Civil Defense will show us how we can start an emergency preparedness plan and how to pack an emergency kit properly. Then, of course, we have two great luxury units to show off to you as well. One of them is brand new, and it is super shiny. Stay right there. Welcome Home will continue in just a minute. Hey everybody and welcome back to Welcome Home. I'm Kyle Mandipad and you know what when it comes to taking care of your home you want to take care of your family as well and I'm standing by here at Guam Homeland Security where I'm going to talk with my friend Jenna about disaster preparedness. How do you prepare to uh, take care of your family to take care of your property in the event of an actual emergency? Let's check it out. Hey Jenna thank you so much for having me. Hey Kyle thank you so much for coming down. First off it's a beautiful space. Where are we girl? Currently, we're in the Emergency Operations Center. So this is where we work with GovGuam agencies, mm. our military partners, uh, private nonprofit organizations, whenever there's a large event or emergency. I see this, the high pressure room. Yes, yeah, so it gets really, really busy in here. Phone lines are going off, people are trading information, so it gets extremely packed in here. I can assume it gets really, really packed, like you mentioned earlier, when there's a big situation going down. And that's kind of what we're here to talk about today. We're here to prep ourselves, or find out how we can prep ourselves, minus the silo, uh, for major disasters, or any disasters for that matter. Right, so our office really takes the approach of an all hazards, all threats preparedness plan. So um, there are multiple ways that you can prepare, and it can be used for different types of emergencies. So um, one of the things that we try to promote is mm -hmm. making a plan for your family. You can also have mm -hmm. a plan individually, like if you need it for work. Mm -hmm. um, but making a plan for your family, and first thing to do is really assess your risks. So Guam, we're prone to typhoons, yeah. earthquakes, tsunamis. Um, you want to assess your living situation if you're in a flood zone area mm -hmm. or a possible landslide area. Just knowing what those risks are and sharing that with your family. Um, the second part would be to know what types of emergency alerts you can mm -hmm. receive. So if, how are you going to receive information if there's an emergency? So you want to sign up for um, you know, local news text alerts okay. or if you can uh, visit social media so you can utilize Guam Homeland Security. We have Facebook, Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter yes. so you can get emergency updates from there. That's exactly where I get all my information See, from. perfect. Not, you know what I mean? Yes. And it's one of those things that is just so convenient and it updates in real time it seems right uh, as you guys come up or, or get updates you just post them on there immediately so when we talk about making the plan you mentioned earlier uh, for families or, or even for offices or just for you uh, in general do you suggest writing things down I mean is it one of those things that you gotta write it down definitely for? write write the plan down you also want to write down um, basic contact information for all the members of your family how are you gonna get in touch with one another say if all the phone lines go out so you're going to want to create um, maybe some safe meeting points, mm -hmm. maybe one for northern, central, and southern. Mm. So you all know a location where if all the cell lines or landlines go mm -hmm. down, we're all going to meet at, say, the Agani Shopping Center. We're all going to meet at a certain location, whatever's more convenient for you. That way everyone in your family is aware. That's brilliant. Okay, so you mentioned earlier about assessing. You talk about some of the things that we are prone to here. Uh, where do we go from there? So as soon as you're done assessing your risks, you want to um, recognize ways that you can prepare. So mm -hmm. including your plan, you want to have um, a communication plan. Again, like I said, how, how we're going to communicate with one another. You also want to talk about um, your emergency meeting place. And then you also want to share that information with every member of your family. 
So there are different resources that you can have. You can have different wallet size, mm -hmm. um, communication cards. Everyone can keep them in their backpack, in their wallet. Um, and then you also want to create an emergency preparedness kit for your family. And one way that you can do that is have um, basic non-perishable food items, mm -hmm. some water, enough to last you at least for 72 hours. Mm -hmm. We try to promote um, for three to seven days, mm -hmm. enough for you, each person of your family. And also in your emergency preparedness kit, you can include flashlights, extra batteries, candles, anything that you would need in case emergency responders are inundated, or overwhelmed in an emergency. I'm gonna need a duffel bag. You're able <laughs> <laughs> so you can create one for your household mm -hmm. that, that can be stationary. You can also create one that is, um, is portable, like say in a small backpack or a bag. So just basic um, life safety essentials, maybe first aid kit. Mm -hmm. And it should be really specific to your family. So if you have someone that has medications oh, or wow. um, if you have babies in your family, you need to include some formula in mm -hmm. there. So um, the disaster preparedness kit can be um, built over time. You don't mm -hmm. need to buy all this material at once. I know sometimes um, a lot of these items can be very expensive, but yeah. what you want to do is keep keep building to your emergency preparedness kit mm -hmm. and also switching out foods that might be expired. That's very true. Right, right. so buy that can of Spam, you know, eat it and then exchange it Girl, for a new one. that never expires. <laughs> you can keep that in there for years. Okay, yeah. so you get it built, you got everything set. Um, in terms of, of storage, you mentioned there could be one that's stationary, uh, right. but also bringing maybe a portable one, leave it in the car. Is right. That what you yeah, you can have multiples if you want one in your in your vehicle. It could be staged in your vehicle at all times. Um, even having like a basic backpack at work, um, and again including that um, first aid kit in case you need you know first mm -hmm. aid. Anyone around you, you have something available. In the spy world, we call those go bags. Yes, or bug Gold out bags. Yes. There are multiple terms for them. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, with with uh, everything, uh, no matter the situation, no matter the disaster, you want to be prepared. Right. You want to be ready for it. Right. And you can utilize these preparedness tips for all hazards. Again, it could be for typhoon. Um, in the event you have to evacuate, earthquake. In the event you have to evacuate. Um, of course, tsunami threats. Um, if you have to, you know, get away from the beach, or you have something in your vehicle that that can as assist you in case there's an actual an emergency. Okay, so we got our preparedness kits down. We're gonna take a look at some of those a little bit later on. But what else is on your mind, Jenna? You are, in my opinion, the superhero of preparedness, <laughs> at least in my world. Tell me a little bit more about how we can get everybody ready. Sure, so I want to highlight some resources that people can, can access all of this information. Okay. So, um, of course, you can access our website, that's ghs.guam.gov. Mm -hmm. And again, utilizing our social media along Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, FEMA has a great app. If you type in FEMA app on your, on your mobile really? phone, you can purchase it from the store. I'm sorry, it's free, okay. but you can um, download it on your phone. And it provides some preparedness tips and even talks about the risks in our area. Wow. Um, we also utilize ready.gov, www.ready.gov. Mm -hmm. And on that site is really a list and it even has downloadable PDFs, um, how to create your family communication plan, mm. um, some information that you can fill out and um, some ready cards that you can have for each family member. So really checking out those resources, it's worth it um, You know, to review your plan. Another thing I wanna highlight is you really need to practice your plan with your family. Mm, yeah. So it's one thing that everyone needs to know it, but you also need to practice it. So um, maybe you might not go through the motions, but maybe you can do pop quiz with your mm -hmm. children and say, okay, where do we meet if we are located here? Um, how, who do we get in touch mm -hmm. with if we can't get in touch with each other? So. Oh, girl, you're hitting me in the field. So this is one <laughs> of those situations uh, where when you think about it, you're like, oh, I don't want to think about it, right? Right. But you got to think about right. it. Right. Because as scary as it is to think about it now, you imagine how much scary it'll be when something actually goes down, if anything goes down. Right. And you're not prepared. Right. right. And there's so many different ways that you can make your plan personal to your family. So I'll share a little um, tip for our family. We have a off-island contact, so an auntie that lives in California. Mm -hmm. um, if we're not able to get a hold of each other, say someone's cell phone's out, or and we find a phone somewhere, we're able to contact that family member in California let them know hey we're okay and we're at the meeting spot and then say my mother calls in mm -hmm. and says have you heard from Jenna you know oh. and we're able to pass information on through there so it's really just a um, it's called an out-of-town contact but okay. it's just someone that um, you can give a message to in hopes that they contact them in case they can't get a hold of you directly. Perfect. So all of these tips and more are available via those resources. Yes. We'll put them up on our website as well. And you know what? It's a lot of information. Right. And, and we got to be prepared. Right. But if I asked you for your one tip, what would be the single most important thing that you would say uh, to anybody who's prepared? 
it's really just including every member of your family. So I might know my plan, but does my husband know my plan? And my children, and you can get your children um, to be held responsible. What do they want to include in their emergency kit? Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a favorite blanket. You, It's your responsibility mm -hmm. to remember that favorite blanket or um, if you're going to want some activities for your children, mm -hmm. give them a responsibility so they feel part of the plan. So it's really just making sure that everyone is aware. There you go, girl. I feel safer already. <laughs> All right, before I get out of here, I've asked Jenna to show us a little bit about what she's got inside her disaster preparedness kit. I'm looking at it. It's huge. You keep this here with you all the time? I do. It's my emergency kit for the office. So I'm excited to show you. I want to see what's inside. Let's do it. So this is our emergency preparedness kit. We have non-perishable food items, rice, canned goods, um, Tabasco, of course. <laughs> yep. um, this kit would include more food, but this is just an example of some non-perishable food items. We do have emergency rations, some MREs. Um, we also have some cleaning supplies, so sponges, as well as Clorox, as well as um, trash, bags. trash bags. So really just things that you normally wouldn't think of. Utensils, how are you going to eat your food, right? Um, we also have peroxide for cleaning. Um, we have lanterns. Of course, we have the, um, my personal favorite is the hand crank radio. If you can't oh. find a hand crank radio, you can also get a battery operated radio. My favorite is the duct tape. Duct tape. So if anybody goes crazy, you can tape them up. <laughs> they don't bring the rest of us down. <laughs> we also have first aid kit, flashlights, batteries. Um, this kit can also be used, or this kit would be stationary. Mm -hmm. So this would stay in either in your home or your office. Um, you can also create smaller kits just wow. like this. Perfect. So it's got everything you possibly need, right? Right. And you can make it, again, really um, really specific to your family's needs. Medication if mm -hmm. you need them. You also want to include important documents or copies of important Ooh, documents in that's here. that's true. Right. In a Ziploc or waterproof container. Pictures, girl. Exactly. Definitely. Anything that you'd need to be saved. So this can be stationary at your home. Okay, so this is our portable emergency preparedness kit. Of course, you got to have your first aid mm -hmm. in there. This is just an emergency supply checklist to ensure that you have everything. In this small packet, we have matches. We also have oh, the wow. um, antibacterial hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. cleaning wipes, and this is a can opener. Oh. So everything's very easily accessible. Some basic canned goods, crackers, snacks. And again, these are just examples. Mm -hmm. A travel kit, just some hygiene products. There you go, no one wants to stink. Right. And like you mentioned, you gotta make it personalized to your family. So if they like to stink, then just leave that one. Right. So um, we put rope in here as well as a tarp, mm -hmm. just in case you have, um, you're have you in substandard living conditions or you need some place to. Shelter. Right. And in here is a portable gas stove for cooking. We also have duct tape and we have the butane gas on the side mm -hmm. here. So um, this concludes this kit. We, you can include a um, flashlight and really make it specific to your family. Mm -hmm. And anything that you can think of that you might need is important to put inside your bag. And the best part is, like you said earlier, it's portable. You can bring this with you and it's easy to grab and go in the event of an actual emergency. Right. So again, this is our portable kit. You can have one stationary at home. You can have one in your vehicle. Um, and just make it specific to you and your family. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for taking the time to share with us how we can be safe with our families. And I, for one, I'm going to keep this information right there in the top of my brain. That's girl. great. Thank you so much Thank for Thank you. And be sure to check out the website and all that good Please stuff. Please do. Well. Thank you. When we return, we'll get you some life hacks that'll help make your next trip to the beach that much better. Got to make things simpler for you. Up next here on Welcome Home. Hi everybody and welcome back to Welcome Home. I'm Kyle Mandipad and I love life hacks, right? But if there's anything I love more than life hacks, it's cool stuff and the beach. So you know what? We've combined all three of those things. I've got some baby powder, a chips can, some wipes, and a bed sheet. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how your next trip to the beach is gonna be way easier than any other trip you've ever had in your life. Life hacks at the beach this summer. All right, so our first life hack today has to do with this bed sheet. Super, super awesome. If I want to go sailing, it'll make a great sail. But today, I want to help keep the sand out of my persons, all right? If you go to the beach, you know that sand goes everywhere, and we're going to make a man-sized playpen to keep all the sand out with this awesome bed sheet. So what you got to do is get a fitted sheet, and I think I'm going to need some help. Help! Help! Oh, look, it's my friend Trina, the producer of this amazing show, and all the other great Red Dragon productions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open this sucker up, just like this. Okay, and you're gonna bring all the stuff you brought with you, right? So like in this case, I'm a bodybuilder, so I brought this bag. 
we'll put it here like so in the corner. Okay, uh, I brought my coach bag too, because I'm classy and bougie like that. I got this gold bag too, because gold bags are tight. Stick them all in the corners. And then we're gonna take this cooler. Told you I was buff. This thing's full. And we're gonna slam it down here. As you can see, all the sand is gonna stay out as long as you keep your crazy kids out and you'll have plenty of room to do this. All right, so we're on to our next hack. As you got done setting up, you got ready to get into the water. Uh-oh, what am I gonna do with all my stuff, right? I'm already in my swimming clothes. Yeah, I swim in this. What am I gonna do with all my valuables? Because I'm here at the beach. Well, guess what? I got the solution for you. As you can see, I have this can here. It's trash, right? There's nothing in it. I already ate all the stuff that's supposed to be in there. But guess what? It's perfect for what we're gonna do. Take all your valuables, just like this. Okay, this is for when I go and hunt Binadu legally, legally. Then I got my glasses, a business card. I don't want anybody stealing my business cards. I put it in this sucker. Oh, uh, what? Who's gonna steal chips, bro? I didn't think so. And you know what, for the even more valuable stuff, I got a surefire way to keep any kind of Saki Malakis away from it. So I got this diaper. Yes, it's a baby diaper. You take all your super valuable stuff, like all of these wallets with no money inside, you wrap it up like this. All right, there, oh. And then you just set it like that. Look, it looks like it's full. Oh, smells good too. And put it there. Who's gonna steal your diaper? If anybody did steal your diaper, call the cops for a whole different reason, because they are creepers. Oh, I just got done swimming and now I'm all wet. What am I gonna do with all my wet clothes and all this other sandy stuff? Well, guess what? I've got another hack for you. All you need is a wipes container. Before you split your house, I want you to empty it out and fill it with plastic bags. You know the store ones that you usually just put into your bathroom trash can? Guess what? You can take them on the go with you here and it works out perfectly for the beach in this case or if you just got crazy kids that like to stick Pop-Tarts underneath their baby chairs in the car. Take this out, open it up. You'll be able to take out plastic bags, put all your wet clothes in and not even worry about them. Then you can hit the road, Jack. I've set up, I've hit the water, I've come out, I'm getting ready to leave, everything's nice and clean. But wait a second, there's still sand all over my feet. Okay, so this last life hack has to do with sandy feet. We hate them, but they're everywhere when you go to the beach. Well, guess what? I've got a solution for you and it comes in the form of baby powder. Look at my feet, they're so pretty. And guess what? They're covered in sand, but I can fix that. I'm gonna take my baby powder and put it all over just like that. Oh, what's that? It's a baby powder foot. And then I'm gonna wipe it on off. And guess what? All the sand runs away. At the same time, I moisturize. I can shave my legs. Look at my ankles. They're so nice. Woohoo! There you go. Oh, what a great day at the beach, right? I mean, all my stuff stayed clean. Nobody stole my money. I got baby powder and perfectly sand free feet. These life hacks will definitely make your next trip to the beach that much better. Sit tight, coming up next, we're gonna take a house tour right here at Welcome Home. Welcome back to Welcome Home. We will now start my favorite part of the show, the house tour, with our agent and friend, Robert Polino of Remax Realty Group. In this house tour, we will feature two properties that are for lease, not sale. Let me explain what lease means exactly. Lease and rent are similar in nature, however, they are not the same. A lease agreement is a contract between the landlord and the tenant that covers the renting of property for a long period of time, which usually is 12 months or more. Let's start this tour off in the hills of Menangin, Leo Palace. Woo, Rob, this Woo. place is huge, bro. Where are we? Well, Kyle, we're here to take a look at some premier rental properties in Guam, uh -huh. starting from the rolling hills of central Guam up here between Chalampago and Jonia. Awesome. So we're at Leo Palace Resort. I don't know where we're at. I'm lost, to be honest with you. We need to find a guy. Do you know anybody? Hop a day, gentlemen. Oh, hey. Hey, Are you guys up? lost? Do you need some help? Um, no, we're never lost. We're men. What's up, girl? <laughs> well, what can I do for you today? What well, brings you guys here? Actually, we're from the show Welcome Home, and we're looking for premier uh, housing units to feature on our show. 
Do you know anything about the Leo Palace? Well, it's your lucky day. I'm the leasing manager here. I'm Lisa. No way! Yeah. Hey, Lisa, come a little closer, girl. <laughs> yeah, so how can I help you? What well, are you guys looking for? Well, we want to know a little bit about what the Leo Palace has to offer. Well, we have m many options. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got condos, we've got golf villas that sit on the golf course, beautiful views. Um, tenants have uh, a bunch of amenities they can take advantage of. I mean, obviously the resort is mm -hmm. huge, so like you said. Um, so yeah. Very cool. Now when you talk amenities, what exactly do you have in mind? Uh, we've got swimming pools, the hotel's got restaurants, um, we've got a bowling alley, hey. yeah, we've got a gym, and of course it's uh, you know at a discounted rate, but it's it's here. It's all here. Awesome. <laughs> you never all have to place, leave. Huh? Never mm -hmm. have to. I like the sound of that. Screw over, Rob. Let's let Lisa get in. <laughs> all right. Lisa, come on in, girl. Let's go for a ride. Well, we can just walk. It's just right here. Oh. Awesome. So Lisa, you brought us up here to the condo unit area of the Leo Palace. And to be honest with you, I don't even know there were condos here at the Leo Palace. Yeah, Kyle, this is a highly sought after location for its resort living at an affordable uh, rate to do experience this daily. Awesome. And you know what? There are birds everywhere, which means there are no snakes, Lisa. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to see today. We're going to see a two bedroom, two bathroom, about 1,800 square feet. Wow. Um, our starting prices for our two bedrooms are 2,200. Okay. And, um, you know, living here, you got amenities um, and a bunch of stuff to do. Perfect. Let's go take a look. Let's go. Upon entering the unit, you'll be greeted by a great foyer area. Then, a little bit down the hall, you'll have the guest's full bathroom on your left. Off to the right, the master bedroom with an ensuite. Check out the ensuite on this one, guys. Walk in closet space and shower, as well as a tub combo. And check this out a bidet in the toilet. And there's nothing to complain about with that master bedroom view of the famous Leo Palace Golf Course. Going back to the main entry hall is a door leading into bedroom number two. Coming back out of bedroom number two takes you to the common areas featuring the living room, dining room, and the kitchen. This kitchen features a pantry as well as a closed off area for washer and dryer hookup. And how about all this storage space and counter space too? Part of the counter is a breakfast bar, which keeps the common areas connected, leaving nobody out of the conversations. Back out of that great kitchen is the living and the dining areas. And by the way, both have a sliding door that lead out to the great wraparound balcony that features an amazing view of the hills of Menengen. To make this condominium even more appealing to you, check out these additional amenities. Swimming pools, access to the great on-site facilities including a bowling alley, restaurants, convenience store, golf course access, a gym for tenants, and so much more. Let's move on to Okatamuning and check out this new condominium tower in Jonestown. Hafa day everybody and welcome back to Welcome Home. Rob, we have been through some of the most amazing homes on the island in past episodes and this episode we're taking a look at some premier properties. Now we've been through the rolling hills of Jotnia already today and now I find myself surrounded by the smell of the ocean. Boy, tell us a little bit about where we're at. Well, we're here, not only you got the smells but you've got the sounds and the sights uh, of Timuning, the beautiful village of Timuning. We're right here at Oka Point at the newest Summer Towers by Cortec International. Wow. This features the first of four towers mm -hmm. of 51 residential units ranging between 1,300 square feet to uh, 1,700 square feet. Okay. Price ranging for this resort style living uh, from uh, 2200 up to $3,400, very affordable for what a premier property to take a look at. Most definitely, and as we look around, we notice these are the four towers that you see in Oka, right next to the hospital. A lot of people have been waiting for the magic to hit this place, and it finally has. We're gonna be able to take a look inside. Rob, I know you mentioned some of the amenities that we've got going on here, some stuff that's gonna be sprouting up in the near future. I noticed we got the basketball court, but what else can we expect? Well, we've, they've already completed a swimming pool, wow. as well as a, looks like a rec center or a gym and a future uh, restaurant uh, that they will actually not only have for the residents, but also for uh, local uh, visitors to come in and, and experience. 
I know the towers will soon also have underground parking, mm. as well as villas that will actually be for sale, which will be right at the cliff line. So many more uh, uh, features to, to uh, take a look at as the, as the development is near completion. Very, very cool. And I'm gonna sell right now. I am sold on just the view alone. We're gonna go take a look at what the inside looks like. Check it out. All right. This unit is new as new can get. They still smell like new home. This unit has a great inviting entryway with great closet space right off the bat. Coming further down the entryway to your left will be a full bathroom. And the first bedroom is right down that same hall with great lighting brought into the whole unit with those great panoramic windows. They're everywhere! The same goes with bedroom number two right next door to the first. And again bedroom three, which you can see here, is also set up for an office. Go back out to the hallway and straight across, you'll be in the master bedroom with a walk-in closet with great shelf space. And that master ensuite too. Imagine sitting in that tub or taking a shower with that great window featuring an ocean view every single day. Check out this double vanity too with a semi-private toilet area. You can have a bathroom or you can have a bathroom with a view. Immediately coming out of the master bedroom are the common areas. That's the kitchen with a great color combination, tiling, appliances, backsplash, and did I mention how awesome this kitchen is? Check out this wraparound ocean view. This is all upstairs in the unit. Here's a list of amenities they have on the property for tenants and their guests. Of course they've got a pool, a gymnasium, basketball court, and there are proposed plans for a restaurant too. To make this deal even sweeter, this unit features gated security. Those are some great properties shown here in this episode. And if you saw something that you'd like to check out in person, don't forget to contact our friend Rob Polino over there at Remax Realty Group at 482-3490 or 647-3725. From all of us here at Welcome Home, that's going to do it for this episode. Until next month, I'm Kyle Mandipat. Have a good one.